Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we have a special guest, but let me just be real. We are going to talk about the personal side of business because, yeah, everybody's at a company and everyone's promoting something and everyone has all this, but honestly... We don't talk enough about the behind the scenes stuff, all the work that's put in before you see the forward facing company. And a lot of women and men out there are working really hard behind the scenes and nobody sees what's going on. They only see this pretty polished uh, production there. So today we are talking to Christina Passmore and she built her very first e-commerce business to six figures in under eight months. And she's opened a successful copywriting agency and she knows what it's like to work with driven entrepreneurs. Y'all, we as driven entrepreneurs are literally the toughest people to work for, right? To work with sometimes because we have our own ideas, our own agenda. We don't like to be told what to do. We don't like to kind of follow the yellow brick road. So we are really driven and that she knows the struggles and the overwhelming number of what you need to do to run a business, start a brand, grow a brand, um, get eyeballs on your stuff. That's really what that means. Growing a brand means more people knowing about it, more people buying it, more people seeing it. And whether that's your small brand on Amazon or a big giant brand that's at Target, you still need to baby your brand. And that's what Christina does. And you can, of course, reach out to her and talk to her. But today we're really going to be talking about the nitty gritty, like what it's like to be a woman in a male dominated industry. That's a hot topic, right? Um, we're going to be talking about the demands of e-commerce and what it's like to really just run a business and work for the different brands and help them build. So without further ado, please welcome Christina Passmore to the show. Christina, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Great. I'm super happy to be here. So thanks for having me. For sure. So I know we're fellow, what I call, I mean, colleagues, if, if entrepreneurs can have colleagues, I guess this is what we are, fellow entrepreneurs and Amazonians and working with Amazon and e-commerce. So just give everybody a little bit of intro of like how you started with e-commerce, how you got into it. And we'll talk a little bit about your journey there. Sure. Yeah. So it's been a little bit of a wild ride, to be honest. Um, I was actually a 14 year flight attendant with a major Canadian airline. And I just had this kind of like lingering feeling in the background that I wasn't really living to potential. And by potential, I mean, you know, I was kind of turning down opportunities. I wasn't really pr pursuing entrepreneurship. Um, and so I kind of just took a leap into selling on Amazon. So I started an online beauty brand. I sold specifically in the Canadian market and scaled that business pretty quickly. Um, and at that point, I realized that other Amazon sellers needed help with their content needs in order to scale their own brands. So anything from brand positioning to content marketing, social media marketing, and of course, the standard like Amazon listing optimization um, needs. I started really honing in on those skills and helping other Amazon sellers with that piece of content. And that's still what I do today in our agency, uh, Christina Inc. So, Yeah. Awesome. So what made you decide that like, you know, you were selling on Amazon and you built your brand, that that was the side that you were really uh, into? Do you have a, a marketing background or any sort of um, background or training in graphics right. or design or any of that? Like what tickles your fancy yeah. about that side of the business? Yeah. So I'd always been a writer at heart and I'd written, you know, in my personal life, but I'd never written professionally in terms of copy to sell. Um, but I'm also a creative. So creativity is really what drives me and moves me. Um, so I had this like lingering feeling in the background that I wasn't really, you know, honing in on these creative skills. And from there, I just once I realized once I made the decision that I wanted to start an agency, I just went into what I call active learning. And I really just immersed myself in all things copywriting. I took some really great copywriting courses. I took many Amazon listing optimization courses. And I had, you know, a little bit of background with a creative aspect previously, like I mentioned in my personal life. So all of these skills kind of came together to kind of produce this agency. So yeah, I, I learned as I, as I went really. Now, when it comes to the digital content, like marketing, um, can you just give everybody a brief overview of like what that means for like layman's terms for people that don't understand what that means? Right. So digital marketing is really just how to market your business online um, to your core audience, obviously. So for Amazon sellers selling in the beauty category, they're figuring out like what their core demographic, what their pain points are, what their needs are. And then they're developing, you know, creative and content um, strategies in order to market to that audience and to sell more product of it 
ultimately is to increase sales and growth. So, Perfect. yeah. Awesome. Now I know we talked about like, okay, that's our brief overview and this is all sunshines and rainbows, right? But like, yeah. we wanted to get a little nitty gritty and personal here about what right. it's like to do all this and, you know, scale a six figure business in under eight months and then have an agency and then, you know, deal with all these different things. So let's talk about your family structure for a second. So are you, are you married? Do you have kids? Like, tell me what that looks like. Sure. So I'll just lay it all out there. <laughs> um, I'm actually divorced. I was divorced in 2019. I don't have any kids and I'm 43. So I think it's a really great conversation for women, especially over 40, that you don't have to have had all this experience to dive into these things. You can start at any point in your life, 50, 60. It really, age is not a barrier and your background is not a barrier. You know, um, I know from experience that you can learn to do all of these things. So yeah. I love, love, love that you said that and you're being so transparent about it because it really is true. Like my mom um, is my business partner in my Amazon business and nice. she started at 57 years old and she had been previously not really a lot of computer experience at all. She was um, a waitress in a fine dining restaurant and she worked there for 22 years. And so age is definitely not a barrier. If you decide that you want to do something different, something, you know, you like you said, you just immerse yourself and I'm going to learn everything I can. You kind of have to go all in to just be like, mm -hmm. okay, I, this is either for me or it's not. And whether you're 14 or 43 or 63, this is anything is possible for you if you really, really want to. So I appreciate sure. your, your transparency there. And whether you, you are a single person building a new life or you have a bunch of kids under feet, it really doesn't matter. All of our needs are really about what kind of fulfilling career we want to have for ourselves. And in 2023, mm -hmm. in this era that we live in gone are the days where somebody gets a job and they stay there for 40 years and they get their nice pension retirement package and they walk away and all is well that's like our parents right like True. this day and age people are like oh i used to do this and now i you know i used to do digital marketing and now i'm in plumbing and now i'm flipping houses and now i'm you know it's, right. it's such a wide open uh, opportunity that we have with technology so i really love that you know age is not a barrier you guys i love it yeah um so when it came to the copywriting, you said you wrote um, personally, were you more of a like a journaler or a novelist or and you moved it to sort of a business writing? So I actually had done, you know, blogging on the side, just personal blogging. And I also written, th people would come to me. I'm a really big communicator. It's interesting. I'm an introvert, but I'm a really big communicator. So people would come to me for things like speeches at weddings or say they had to write a really personal letter to someone that had some kind of meaning or impact. I was always the person that people came to. Um, so I kind of just took that and just, you know, really d immersed myself in it, like you said, and started really learning the foundations of copy and marketing and things to really like sell and like help these brands scale online. Awesome. I love that. And, you know, I feel like everyone thrives when they really discover not only, you know, what they're good at and also what they love, you know, your True. friends, your family, people reaching out to you saying, you have such a way with words. Can you yeah. help me write this? You're it, the kind of these light bulbs go off. You're like, well, I'm really good at this. And I bet if I learned a few things, it could be an, a source of income. So, totally. you know, I'm always yeah. about, you know, I always say, use your skills to pay the bills, right? Whatever you're good at and what you're passionate about, because let's be honest, if we're not passionate and we don't really like it, it ends up being just another job, right? Another task, yeah. another thing we have to do. I think, you know, as entrepreneurs, it's tough to get up every day and not have someone say, do this and do that. You have to do it all, or you have to yeah. delegate it all or hire all. And, you know, think about those things. It's really tough as a business owner to make and have shoulder all the responsibility. I agree. Yeah, you have to be a self-motivator and you also have to take the good with the bad, understanding that this is not a perfect journey. Like you see those posts on Instagram where they're like what you thought entrepreneurial would be or entrepreneurship would be like, and yeah, like it's like this. this huge like scale. Yeah, it's like that is so true, right? Like you're going to have major ups and major downs, but I really try to focus in on like, what did I learn from that? Like the most negative experiences in my e-commerce journey, um, not that I want to dive into that, but like mm -hmm. that has given me the most growth. So those challenges are really opportunity and just kind of switching your mindset from living in fear of that and kind of just like realizing that like the growth you're going to get out of it is far more valuable than you not starting. Right. So absolutely. Yeah. 
I totally agree with that. And my 20 year journey in e-commerce has been very much so that if I look yeah. back and go, wow, in 20 years, look at all of these worst moments and also best moments and realize how far away they are from each other and how the ups usually come right after the really big downs, right? True. So it's like, oh, so remember true. that time we did this? What happened right before that? It was usually yeah. some sort of tragic something, right? True. And so yeah. we do get that best part of growth when we, and it's growing pains. That's really what those are is yes. realizing like yeah. when something's not working it really forces us to take a good microscopic look at it and go wow mm -hmm. what we were doing before isn't working so much anymore exactly. what do we need to do to change and sometimes that's by force right you know so true yeah. yeah i think too that it's a lot about personal growth like the entrepreneurial journey is about business and mindset and success and all of those great things but truthfully along the way you learn a lot about yourself and those things as women, I think inherently in our society that we kind of like subdue or like push down in our 20s, you know, and in our early 30s, as we get a little bit older, we start realizing that like, hey, those are my skills. Like it's time to just like authentically show people who I am and what I can offer. And I'm going to kind of move past that fear mindset. So, yeah. I love that. And you know what? It's unapologetically. I think I yeah. literally, I'm not kidding you. When I hit 40, it was like, you know, most people like dread 40 and it feels like, oh my gosh, you're middle ages and that I hit 40. And I was like, I have felt a new sense of freedom that I just yeah. stopped caring about a lot of things that I used to care about. And I thought, you know what? I'm too old for some of this petty stuff anymore. And yeah. I'm like, I want this, this, and this. And the number one thing on that list for me is yeah. peace. Yeah, I want peace in life. And that comes with a lot of different mindset work and a lot of personal growth and saying no way more often than oh, I really? used to. I used to be such a yes person. And it was like, yeah. I can make everything work. And I can say yes to this, this opportunity and that opportunity going from like saying no to everything to then unleashing the fear, saying yes to everything. And now back to more of a what's going to be best for me and my peace right. of mind and what what I value most, which is my family and my personal like, I just, I like to feel yeah. peace. So when everything's out of balance, I get all a, a little bit uptight about things. And so, you know, just looking at that and realizing that when we get a little older, it's like we have, we get, we have all the same decisions. It's just right. a different mindset of like, what do I really care about between now and the time, you know, as you know, the old is gone, the new is coming. Right. Yeah. So uh, I love, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, it's such an interesting conversation because like, I really resonate with that. When I was younger, I was very passive, very people pleasing. I didn't want to stir the pot. And I just find not necessarily at right at 40, but certainly at 43 that I claim who I am now. You know, I can be very direct. I can say no when I mean no. If I'm not like thrilled with the way something is going, I'll speak up. Um, and I'm proud of that. Like it's a, it's a progression, right? And you get to this place in life where you're right. Your peace is just not worth losing. Yeah. Um, and you learn that some of these things that you've kind of suppressed are okay to be right. So, yeah, I think it's that permission that we're finally giving mm -hmm. ourselves to be like, you know, I'm up unapologetically going to be who I am. Yeah. And that doesn't have to be everybody's cup of tea. Totally. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. When years ago, I wasn't okay with that. I wanted right. to make sure that, well, what do you mean? Like, we have exactly. to get along. We have to be pleased. Yeah. Everybody has to be happy. And I yeah. realized that everyone can be happy and it doesn't have to be my responsibility. So totally. it really is freeing to be able to step into that. Now, shaping yeah. that into business, how has, mm -hmm. how has that shifted for you over the years as far as, as, far as what I call that is more, a little bit more of a self empowerment. It's not like, yay, right. yay, feministic kind of thing. It's just more of like, I'm just going to be really okay with who I am and what I offer the world. And if that's not for you, that's okay. So when did yeah. you really start to see some of that shift in business? Um, it took a while. I'll be honest. It was like an internal struggle. I think I was fighting it for a really long time because I I wanted, you know, I wanted to be, you want to be accepted in whatever community you're kind of immersing yourself in. So I found myself wanting to be accepted in this Amazon community and I have been, but that was kind of weighing more of my decisions than my business. So I would say that it really, it, it, it kind of started evolving as I started my content marketing agency, because then I realized that like, you know, I don't have a coach behind me. I don't have anyone like, you know, telling me how to do things. Like I am a sole proprietor running my own agency. I have to figure things out and stand on my own two feet. So I think it took a couple of years, but I finally just got to this place where I was like, 
okay. <laughs> you know, this is this is who I am. This is what I have to offer. And hopefully that resonates with the right people at the right time. Mm -hmm. And I really think that once we step into that and we just own it for ourselves, these chip on our shoulder kind of thing. It's not really a chip, but it might be something holding us back just tends to start to crumble. You hold your head up a little higher and it's not an arrogance. It's just a confidence. It's like, you know what? I finally know who I am, what I'm offering to the world and yeah. um, how I can serve and help people with the knowledge and uh, services that I have. And I so think that true. people really connect with that. And they, they that comes through with messaging and marketing and also just your genuine self. When you show up as your genuine self, you can't true. fake that. People We'll see see right, right through it and so yeah. as we continually show up in this world um and in the amazon space as our authentic selves um right. the people that are supposed to be working with us will will find our messaging and kind of resonate with it and go with us when there's many other options and let's talk about that because we know right. in amazon um yeah. it is a male dominated industry it has okay. for many years it's one of the reasons in 2014 that i started my own podcast and my own show and my own teaching and training it wasn't and i'm not anti-men or anything like that yeah. so i just want the audience to realize that we're not going to man bash or anything but yeah. we're just simply pointing out the differences when i started in amazon there were no female teachers they were um white males 40 plus 30 plus you know around that age teaching all this amazon stuff and i was like i am a stay-at-home mom with two kids underfoot and my husband has like a feast or famine job so i'm like trying to make ends meet help with that try to you know take care of my kids at the same time and the struggle is real it's a different struggle um for right. someone who's doing it full time and it's their job and they can spend nothing but their 40 hours on that job it creates a different dynamic and so sure. um i'd love your take a little bit on how it's been to navigate that sort of male dominated industry. Right. Well, I'll just be honest, it's been difficult. It hasn't necessarily been easy. Um, but I think aligning yourself with a great community of women is really important in your e commerce journey, whatever entrepreneurial journey you're taking. Um, women that you really resonate with and look up to. Um, and there's some empowerment in that that can help you build your own self-empowerment along your journey. Um, but yeah, it's been a little bit challenging. You know, I've um, experienced I've experienced a variety of different things with men in e-commerce. Unfortunately, you know, oftentimes I'm judged by what I look like. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of an ultimate cursor for like what I have to offer my business. And I've just realized that I just have to push past it I don't focus on it. I don't dwell on it. But at the same time, I definitely recognize it, you know, and I'm just like, you know what, this deal isn't for me. I think I'm just going to go down this direction, um, maybe do, a, you know, a different alignment with other people um, and just authentically operating in that sense, right? Like see something, say something, but mm -hmm. in terms of internally, when you have like a red flag kind of go up, notice that red flag. You're, you're not necessarily wrong. Just notice it and kind of move past it. So that's kind of the approach that I've taken. Um, I've been a little bit um, surprised by a lot of these Amazon conferences and events that they are seemingly kind of catered more to men. Um, and I understand the demographic there, right? Like a large uh, percentage of people, you know, running these Amazon businesses are male and that's great. But at the same time, like, let's start thinking about what can we do to attract the female market? You know, the market like yourself who has children and is running a busy household, like what would it take to get this demographic at an Amazon event, even once or um, every one to two years, right? Like, I think that we've come a long way, but I think that there's a little bit more room for improvement in making some inclusivity in the space. I know me, my idea light yeah. bulbs are going off. I'm a visionary yeah. and I'm like, ooh, let's do it. Like a, not necessarily a woman's only, but I mean, yeah. we could line up a powerful uh, list of women speakers to speak into the lives of women who want to do this on a smaller scale, which is something right. that I've received. I mean, I don't know the word. I want to be politically correct, but I'm just me. Like discrimination or judgment right. or stereotype or something like that has happened to me many, many times in right. the space, whether I've been applying to be a speaker or I've been trying to do some different things there. And it's just right. and and for being too small. 
And that's right. something that I advocate for, for people that are learning from here, from the Amazon files, from Mommy Income, is that we're all about the small people. There's a lot right. of people that turn me down and, and roll it. their <laughs> eyes and say, oh, I wasted my time because I thought you were a big deal and you're doing $10 million, you know, sellers. And I'm like, no, my people are just starting. They're, they're yeah. lucky, you know, a lot of them are, are lucky to break even, you know, uh, uh, six figures every year in right. their Amazon store. They're beginners. And even some of them that are advanced, um, they're not $10 million or more where agencies laugh at you and go, oh, we don't work with you unless you're making at least $5 million right. in sales a year, right? So yeah. the smaller sellers that maybe just want to make you know, $10,000 to pay for, you know, dance or soccer camp or, you know, their family vacation every year. It doesn't right. always have to be some big Don't giant remember. thing. And so totally. I want women to know and be empowered that no matter what they've done, no matter if their business is making a hundred dollars a month or a hundred thousand dollars a month, your mm -hmm. efforts are worthy and valuable. And it doesn't matter how big or small that you are. You have a seat at this table. Totally. Absolutely. Love it. I love it. Yeah, that really hits for me. Um, especially like you're going to experience failure along your journey, right? Like it's it's not a comfortable thing to talk about, but you might experience some really massive downs in your Amazon business. But uh, as we mentioned before, all of those experiences are what's really going to give you the learning, the resources, the knowledge in order to either pursue that business or start something else. And that's okay. And yeah, I think that women absolutely have a seat at the table. And I'm, I'm really glad that we're having this conversation because I think the more we go on not talking about it, we kind of like live in this like fear mindset. And it's like, let's just get over that, right? Yeah. Like, let's have the tricky conversations. And let's, and, and another thing with that is that, I'll, you know, in business, this is just the reality that people don't talk about. And I'm always saying on this show, it's always how to Amazon or, you know, I'm a tough love I'm a tough love girl. I'm going to hug and a slug. I'm going to tell you how it yeah. is and I'm going to hug you and get you through it. Um, right. But it's not, you know, can't be without those hard things. And the, re the reality is with the hard conversations is that we've had to push our way to the table and that's okay mm -hmm. because no one yeah. else is going to do it for us. No one True. else is going to knock on those doors and say, hi, remember me? I can speak mm -hmm. here. Here's my speaker role. Here's my thing. Here's my 20 years of experience. Maybe now you'll listen. Like, yeah. you know, it's like those sort of things. But at the same time, while that feels kind of yucky personally, it's also like no one else will advocate for you no. more than you. And no. people will, you know, we have the confidence to just say, hey, I belong at this table and here's what I offer and here's what I have. And being okay with being rejected. Rejection is part of business. Ups totally. and downs and rejection is going to come. I will never forget the first time way back in 2014 or 2015 when I was really just starting and someone reached out and um, she started the conversation and I was really excited to be maybe invited to this thing. And then she's like, well, how big is your audience? And I told her at that time and she's like, no, thanks. She's like, I'll come back when you have X, X, X. And I like cried for a few hours. And I was just yeah. like, I I'm just working so hard at what's going on. And someone else was like, it's okay. Just pay your dues. If yeah. she doesn't want to, somebody else will. Rejection's part totally. of the business. But I still remember that first time someone's like, you're, they flat, flat out said, you're not good enough for what we're doing. <laughs> Totally. Like, yeah. Yes. But I, I think pushing past that, like you said, is it's so easy to go down that rabbit hole of thinking like, for me, this is so terrible. This is so yeah. awful. And it happens. Like we all go through those moments, but then there's this transition where you're like, you know what? Like I'm going to keep, keep striving for the yes. Mm -hmm. The right people are going to want me to speak. The right people are going to want me to be a part of their community and show what I have to offer. And that's yeah. really what you want to build alignment with anyway. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. You don't want to work with someone who's not interested in working with you or collaborating or even, right. um, I will even say this happened to me in recent weeks, um, working in a way that's a win-win for both. I've had, right. I have many, many conversations with lots of owners and a lot of different service providers and things like that. And, you know, I've had several recent approaches to where like, well, this is what we, that you can do for us. And I say, okay, yeah. great. Where's the, where's the co collab thing here? Like, well, we don't have anything for you at this time, but totally. we want you yeah. to do all these things for us. I'm like, okay. Um, and being okay with, with looking at what is best for you. And I think as women, mm -hmm. or at least in my upbringing or background is always taught that like, maybe your opinion or your, your input is either secondary or not as valuable. And so you right. need to own the fact that yes, it is. And if it's not a good fit for you, it's not selfish to say no. It's actually totally. self-protection to say, you know what? Yeah. I think I'm going to pass on this or I'm going to wait. Waiting is the hardest part for me. I get excited right. and I'm like, okay, I want to take action now. Yeah. And I'm like, now I have a 24 hour rule. 
Totally great. 24 hour rule. Today, as a matter of fact, I'm invoking that in this moment. I can't wait till 9 a.m. tomorrow so I can send an email of what I want to yeah. do. Um, but I still, I'm, I'm, I gave myself the boundary because I've said yes to so many things in the moment and yeah. then think them through later and go, that was not the best idea. So I give myself this 24 hours to be like, okay, I can be excited. I can go the ups and the downs, and then I can make a decision and own it. So totally. I've, that's a boundary I've set for myself. At least. Yeah. I've experienced that a little bit too, with um, partnerships and things like that, where you're mentioning people are kind of looking at what they can, what you can do for them. And I think what you just said is just, it sums it up perfectly is in, in any business, any entrepreneurship um, journey, Amazon, whatever it might be, is learning when it's not okay for you, you know? And like I said, kind of paying attention to those feelings. Like in the beginning, when you first start something, you're so excited to be part of this thing and this machine, um, but you have to really hone in on what is it what is it benefiting you? Like not to sound selfish, but at a certain point you have to claim that. Otherwise you're going to get walked all over, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, saying no when you mean no, just get comfortable with that discomfort, lean into it, get more comfortable because that's going to help you build confidence for the future. Absolutely. And you know, confidence is everything. Confidence comes with consistency. It comes mm -hmm. with getting beat up from every side and going, you know what, I'm still here. And yeah, I've had a couple of bruises and some scars and some things that will last a lifetime, but did I die though? Okay. I did not die. So that yeah. means I must be stronger than I was yesterday. Cause not only have you hit me from every side, but I'm still here. So exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And, you know, um, one of my mentors uh, from years past, he always said, you know, challenges are inevitable, but defeat is optional. It is really optional. We are not defeated unless we throw in the towel and get uh, give up because there's always yeah. another battle. There's always another uh, challenge you're going to have to rise to. And defeat is absolutely optional. Quitting is optional, too. So you don't have to, right. you can go pivot and change in a different way. Um, but right. I love that. Well, Christina, thank you so much yeah. for sharing all of this and being so vulnerable and honest. I just love that. And I'm just thinking about the future and maybe we'll have this Women of Amazon uh, little conference right. where we just empower each other to be like, no matter where you are, how you are, you can you can do anything you want. Totally, um, so true, so. yeah. <laughs> awesome, can you tell everyone how they can connect with you? How can they find out more about you and what you do and just um, listen to your amazing wisdom? Them. Sure. So you can email me at hello at christinainc.com. Um, our website is also christinainc.com. Um, I'm on social platforms under Christina Inc. Content Marketing. I have a really small YouTube channel that I'm trying to grow. Um, I'm going to be releasing new content in the coming weeks. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And all the links you guys will be below the video, of course, and in the social. So make sure that you're you're following Christina. I know she's going to have amazing things to say and you're going to learn a lot about branding and marketing. But I just appreciate this conversation about being open and honest about all of these things. It's just refreshing to um, discuss it and talk about it and realize that, yeah, there is reality. So anyone listening that um, male or female that has experienced that or maybe has dished a little bit of that out. Um, it's just my mantra around home is, you know, if you know better, do better. You know, you don't totally. always know better until you do. But once you True. do, you know better, do better. So if there's a right. male out there that has kind of dismissed a woman because of her appearance or because her experience level or just because she's not one of us and we don't relate, reconsider. Because Take I think us, we yeah. all have a lot to bring to the table. And if we uh, embrace uh, diverse outlooks on everything, our team is so much stronger no matter what we have. So true. Great conversation. Thanks again for having me. Thanks. And you guys, again, um, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. And we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files. Bye, everyone.